Babe, where are we at? One steak. One steak. It looks like that. One steak. This is the menu. Boom. Babe, where is this place? Huh? Where are we, basically? Where are we? You the address right here. Boom. Location. They have several. They have several locations. One. Which one are we at? Right here. We're at this one. Yeah. Okay, boom. It's uh, only been here a little while. Fizzing at a photo they've taken Space tree flying through the skies And battles happen everywhere And they've got some others, but nice salads. They've got their own salad, which is a bestseller. She says this is a vinegar dressing, Italian, which is good for me, being that my name's Angelo. they got a Caesar salad, some other stuff. they got a salmon salad. Um... And at reasonable prices too, like on the soup here, like the soup is only like 55,000, you know, not, not too bad. Um, this is their best seller, the steak. Comes in 150 grams or 200 grams. Uh, so I'm doing the bigger one, of course. Um, we just had spaghetti yesterday, so I'm gonna hold. I really wanted to try it, but I'll try it another day. Their burger looks like a best seller also. They've got some combos, like a spicy beef noodle, spicy beef over noodles, um, pork, um, I really wanted to try this too, but I am trying to lose weight. Um, 100,000. So how much is 100,000? Um, I say it in all my videos. 200,000, 230,000 is $10. So that's a little less than five bucks. Um, some seafood, a lot of different salmon choices. Salmon this, salmon that, salmon spaghetti, salmon over brown rice, salmon over purple rice, salmon over white rice. Um, creamy spaghetti and seafood. Yeah. Okay. And uh, different pork. Pork, pork, pork. Chicken, chicken, chicken. Um, combos. These are kind of nice combos, man. Actually, so here. Now, about eating, you know, eating cheap, eating healthy. A lot of motorbikes in Vietnam can never get around the noise. So uh, eating cheap, eating healthy. They got these healthy combos. Healthy, healthy, healthy. Um, you got some salmon, brown rice, some vegetables, a little salad, a drink, 160000 Again, $10 is 230000 so that's probably mm, a little over five bucks. Um, all of these. Pretty cool, pretty nice looking, nice looking dishes. And we're getting this big drink. What was this drink called? Uh, honeycomb what? Honeycomb honey quat? Mm. Cool. French fries, cheese sticks and sausage, which I had to get an order of. <laughs> uh, some other little things like deep fried onion rings, calamari, um, shrimp. Um, you can get side dishes too of just like the pork, the chicken, or the salmon. Pretty cool. They have dessert. Little this, little yogurt. Vietnam yogurt is really good, man. You, Vietnam knows how to do yogurt, that's for sure. This is what we're doing, the honeycomb. Honeycomb quad. Good stuff. And they also have beer, if that's your thing. All right, let me show you the inside real quick. And let me show you what it looks like from the outside. So this is a pretty little corner. Nice buildings. Um, not too much traffic back here. Uh, this is the place. Boom, okay. Now, um, we came from this way and actually the street was almost covered in, looks like the worst kind of dark water. Um, we made it by like six inches along the, the side. Uh, next, we're going to head over here. Some kind of Vietnamese place, spring rolls, something like that. Looks pretty good and it also has high ratings online. So, uh, about ratings online. A lot of Vietnamese. We found all the nice, a lot of nice little places in the neighborhood that are not on Google Maps. So, um, a lot of the Vietnamese don't want to be on Google Maps because then they get taxed. You know, the small little places. But there's places that have been cooking or cooking uh, for like a long time and they're not on Google anywhere so it's just word of mouth that gets you there so um, uh, but you know if you want foreigner business I'm sorry foreigners don't know where the heck they're going you got to be on Google Maps you know so um, anyways that's that we'll be back in a bit when the food comes all right so the salad has arrived and this is the sausage she she guessed it it's probably good for 30 we saw it was 30,000 and I was like, oh, it's probably going to be uh, Vietnamese sausage. And it looks like it. But 
It's good though. <laughs> All right, our drinks have arrived. Honey kumquat. Mm -hmm. And kumquat, so you know, is the basically um, the Filipino calamansi. Kumquat is the English name. So a sweet and sour drink. And the steaks have arrived. La 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 la. She's smiling. La 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 la. la. Yes, let's go. We ordered all the sauce because we wanted to try all of them. Num num num. <laughs> I told her we should go easy because we plan on eating over there next. It's from a certain hometown. What hometown? Rang. Fang Rang. That restaurant over there specializes in Fang Rang food. And more food keeps coming out over here. Just got some some sales. All right, as a businessman myself, um, I own a large consulting company in uh, Chicago. Uh, thousands of customers, and um, you gotta serve a knife, knife, a steak knife with steak. You can't use butter knives. This is a butter knife. So when I come back, one steak you should have steak knives. All right, this the butter knives. Even though they're butter knives, they're rather sharp. They work. They work okay. Um, the steak, the most important thing. How do they cook the steak? That's what, uh, they actually do a pretty good job. That's my medium rare, high five. They say if you wanna live longer, quit drinking, don't eat red meat, don't smoke. I say, too big a step for me right now. Maybe tomorrow. So these snails, I was asking if I could get my salt and pepper in calamansi, kumquat, the little baby lime that you see in the drink there. That mixture is pretty good to dip most snails in. She said, oh no, they put the sauce into the shell. So the first thing you did is you shoot it. I already shoot it and they, you can, it, this is when it cooks, it comes out a little bit so you can grab it with your teeth. And then you pull. <laughs> not pretty. And this one, this one tastes a lot like ocean, so I'm not a fan. You like it, I know you like it, right? What? I don't like this one. What? Um, see, I'm not a snail expert, so I don't know. There's there's tons of different kinds of snails. We have a saying in the States, like if it tastes like seafood, mm. then it's probably not fresh. But some things do actually taste mm. ocean-y or seafood. So, um, yeah. Oh yeah, there you go. Look at that. She knows the tail. She... Oh yeah, just get that juice. Yeah. <laughs> one to ten. One, one to ten. How much you like that? Yeah, it's just, I think it's just not our typical snail. Everything else is great. All right, there is one good thing uh, I also thought of. Another good thing, I should say, that I thought of about one steak steakhouse. I guess that's the boss or the owner. He's definitely he's definitely in Alright, another good thing I like about one steak. Okay. Uh, one steak. I noticed something uh, when I finished my steak. Now she gave me a little bit of hers. This is the first time first time, second time in Vietnam that I ate a steak with no tendons. Uh, tendons um, are the white thing. Uh, I, I'm saying this because I know a lot of my Vietnamese watchers use uh, the dictation or the Vietnamese dictation or captions. Um, a tendon is the white string like a, a shoelace through your meat. You know, it's very tough, very hard. And um, why a lot of steaks have that in Vietnam? Because just like in America, when you buy this steak, it's much cheaper. They can purchase this type of steak with a tendon inside for a lot less money and make more profit on it and let the customer deal with a you know, cutting it out of the steak or chewing it and spitting it out, whatever. So this was a nice, straight, solid piece of meat. No tendons. That's great. Good quality meat and good quality choice of meat where, you know, the section of meat that they're buying is a premium section. So they're not going cheap here. So high five. Um, and it's still a reasonable price, you know. So well done, one steak. Well done. What are we talking about, baby? Tell them what we're talking about. We talk uh, about the business from my sister. Right, okay. Little sister, I call her big little, little big sister. She's not little at all, she's actually bigger than Fung. Um, taller, I should say, not, yeah. But anyways, um, 
So she's got her first real job as a waitress. And then she's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I love my job. love my job. Day one, day two, day three. Uh, day four, oh, I hate my job. <laughs> I'm like, I, I, I told her, right? I said I wanted her to have a real job so she would know what it's like to go to work for somebody else, have a real boss up your ass every day. And, da, 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 da. and I said, but now I kind of feel bad for her because she goes to school. So she's going to her job like early in the morning. Her school starts at like 12 to 5, her first class. Then she has a nighttime class from like 6 to 8, you know, so... Um, now, after school, she went to her to the restaurant tonight. They're making her do a swing shift. She's working till 10 p.m. on a Saturday, and then they're gonna. I told you they're gonna have her be there 6 a.m. tomorrow. You, uh, you, now you normally need good rest is eight hours. I used to work in healthcare a long time ago. All my friends are still in healthcare. My mom was a nurse for 30 years. Um, you need at least eight hours of sleep to to be rested. So 10 to 6, that's only eight hours right there. She's got to get home, take a shower takes an hour to fall asleep you know so she's only gonna get like six hours sleep maximum before she's back again six o'clock tomorrow morning so I was sitting here telling Fung I was thinking you know hey maybe you know there's a ton of street vendors here I mean there's people um, I've taken some video I haven't posted it yet but I'll show you some of these busy businesses at night that don't even pay rent when the business is closed like the street they just set out like 50 60 table and, and they said they cook like they're good cooks so they're busy um, there's a string of bars and at the end of the parking lot there's like 60, 70 people eating snails, you know, so um, pretty good. Oh, we got our, this is the flan. Good stuff, thank you. <laughs> you got it? Cool, thank you, come on. So, uh, uh, flan and yogurt, that's what we did. So I was telling Fung now, like, hey, now, I'm like, her and I also, um, I've been looking at several businesses, I made a couple offers, um, you know, things keep opening, closing, lockdown, no lockdown. And um, uh, I was telling her, like, now I think, you know, when I see her little sister going to work, I was thinking we should just buy her, like, a little food cart. I see people out in the morning selling roadside coffee, selling roadside juices, uh, soup, you know, uh, some kind of cheap breakfast, like, you know, chicken over rice, whatever. And just let her have her own little cart just so she gets the sense of being her own boss. Oh, now, even though this, you know, it's a lot of her work, she's got to prepare everything. Her mom's been doing that all their lives. Um, her mom sells two huge, big, big pots of soup every day at the school. She goes early in the morning. It's not catch, all her life. Huh? It's not all her life. Just all her your life. life. Mom has been selling soup. No, before When did she, she start? Before she worked for okay. the company. How old were you when she started? 15. Oh, I just lost a whole bunch of respect for mom. I thought she was doing this all your life. She's only been doing it a few years. I told you she worked. I thought she worked all her life selling soup. Now it's not a cool story. I didn't lose any respect. I still love Mama Fung. So Mama Fung was working in an office until um, Mrs. Fung here started being a bad kid and running around all over town on her motorbike, drinking, driving, and uh, you know hitting people, crashing her motorbike. No, she never did those things that I know of. Well, she has crashed. I don't know if she was drinking or not. Um, but anyways. Uh, so then Mama Fung had to quit her office job and start babysitting her 15-year-old daughter. Didn't she? Right? Right, babe? Because you're out there messing it up, right? You're getting all hopped up on balloons, right? You're going down. Okay, tell me the truth, yes or no. Have you ever driven your motorbike and done a balloon at the same time? No. Swear? Raise your hands, I swear. Okay. Did you ever do it? Never mind. Huh. So anyways, back to my cool story. I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so yeah, I was just telling her sister, all jokes aside, we should get her a little, some kind of cart that she can sell whatever she wants in the morning. Same hours that she's working now. And let her have the sense of, oh, I'm making my own money. I'm my own boss. And that really is, That's I think that's good for any young person to experience. Right away, start trying to make your own money. Eliminate the middleman. Here's, uh, I love a lot of motivational quotes. One of my favorite quotes is um, you can start building your own dreams or you can be paid to build somebody else's dream. So think about that one. Take care, come to one steak. Good stuff, good food, good boss. Oh, they also take credit cards and they also do bank transfer. Because again, we showed up with no cash. We like never have cash. Good time, so don't rob us. No cash, no cash on board. All right, you thought we were done, but we're not done yet. We just thought of something else I thought of about business that I wanted to mention. I was saying, you know, hey, yes, so you, you have your freedom, uh, you can make your schedule, but here's the thing, when you're new, you gotta be there all the time, babe. Talking to you too, talking to you too. Talking to you also, oh, she's using her mirror on her phone. 
You're good, babe. I'll tell you if you have something on your face. Um, so I would say like, um, uh, it also, uh, business more than anything, while it gives you freedom, business will teach you responsibility like nothing else in your life. Like if you think you gotta be responsible with your, your job or you're working for somebody, wait till you own your own business. Um, there's a lot of misconceptions about my business and I said this in some other videos a long, long time ago. Um, uh, I'm not sure I ever posted any of those, just sharing with my friends. There's two big misconceptions and I actually read this in a book um, I like reading books too about other people who started with nothing, made a lot of money. Uh, the great frame up, they do artwork framing. A, a family business started with nothing, became billionaires, uh, nationwide chain of framing stores. He said the two biggest misconceptions, when you own your own business, people think you answer to no one. The truth is, when you own your own business, you answer to everybody. When it gets to my desk, I can no longer give it to her, I can no longer give it to someone, I can no longer delegate it. When it gets to me, I've got to deal with it. So, um, what was the other one? Um, so, but yeah, I don't know. I, that was the most important one. When you think you don't answer to anybody, but the truth is you answer to everybody. So, business, like nothing else in life, will teach you responsibility. Um, is, so, saying, if we get her a little food cart, if, if she works the same hours, she's going to make probably better money and be her own boss. Doesn't have to take orders from anyone. But, what if, and I said she can make her own schedule. Well, what if she won't show up? Well, when your customers know you're not there, they might not stop by. You, you, you know, they got to know that you're consistent. You know, so anyways, this concludes our great talk at one steak. The flan was good. The yogurt seems good. Everything's good. Upgrade to steak knives, one steak, because it's a really nice image. Everything is clean here. Everything is new. Um, maybe a little bigger tables would be nice in the future, but I'm sure not everybody orders as much food as these two people. <laughs> so... We always order for four, <laughs> even though we're two. Anyways, all right, we're out. See you next time. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Please like. I don't make money on YouTube, but it keeps me above all the other, you know, people vlogging in Ho Chi Minh. Good times. Peace. And you thought we were done, but we're not. So we keep continuing the conversation about Trin and the food cart. And she's like, yeah, I want to do it. You know, and she's like, yeah, and we're talking about the cost. And basically, uh, you got a small bill, baby. Small bill for my mom over here. Older women in Vietnam always sell lottery tickets. I don't buy it. When I first got here, I bought them for like a month. I had, like, I had a mountain of tickets and I only won on one. There we go. That's what we do. Just let her keep it. Let her keep it. No, no, no. Let her keep it. Let her keep it. Let her keep it. Good job. Good job. Come on. Okay, one. There we go. All right. <laughs> Mama's happy. Bye bye, Mama. 99. 99. Yeah? All right, is that the big money? Now we can quit our jobs? Langbian. Let me show them what the back of the odds. Uh, this is a lottery ticket up close. Now watch, you know, it's gonna win and everybody online is gonna reprint this and we're gonna have to share it with like a thousand people. So here's uh, how the back of the lottery tickets look. Uh, the biggest payouts, oh, two billion. Um, one billion is about $40,000. So um, that's about $80,000, the grand prize there. Two billion. High five. You know what, my ADD kicked in there and I forgot what we were talking about. But yeah, we were talking when we stopped the last time about, you know, you know what would it cost and whatever. And she's like, yeah, you know, we could probably get her like a cart and everything she needs uh, for like five million, which is about a little over $200. And then I was like, yeah, but you know, we gotta see how serious she is. We, you know, we gotta talk to her about it too, if she really wants to do it. Because, you know, you can't make somebody be responsible. Now her little sister's only like, uh, she's a teenager, you know, so, you know, you, um, you know, even though it's only 5 million, it would kind of burn me if we did that. And then she tried it a couple days and it ended up like collecting dust or laundry, you know? Uh, <laughs> so, uh, we'll see, but yeah, um, this, she's like, Oh, I'll go through every day. I'll help her, you know, coach her. And that's what you need. You also need coaches when you're new at any kind of business, any kind of coach, anybody who's done it before you, you need to listen and take all the notes you can. Try to find ways to do it better. That's how I did it.